Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video with me, Boofle Spoofle. And in a few weeks time, the Perseverance rover will hopefully land on the surface of Mars using its Sky Crane deployment technique. And it's going to be the second time that a rover has actually landed on Mars using this technique. So I thought that in spirit of this rover landing, no pun intended, I would make a tutorial on how to build one of these landing systems. So this build is going to be completely stock. There is going to be an option to use apart from the Breaking Ground DLC, uh, which I will be doing, but you don't necessarily need it. It just makes it a bit more true to the uh, actual Perseverance Sky Crane system. So the first thing you want to do is grab one of these Rovemate probe cores. And um, I'm just going to quickly build a rover. It's going to be a very basic one, but um, I'm going to go ahead and grab these wheels. Uh, you can use these ones if you want, but I'm just going to go with these. Make sure you turn on symmetry and angle snapping. And then I'm going to place one here. You can alt click it to duplicate it. I'm going to place one in the middle and then one on the edge like that. And then just use the offset tool with angle snapping off. And just make sure that they're nice and even. And uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is we need some power for this thing. So I'm going to grab these solar panels and turn off angle snapping and then just place them in symmetry. It's important that you have mirror symmetry rather than radial symmetry. To switch between those, you can just hit R. So we're going to place one right there. And then we're going to also place one in the middle with symmetry off. So there we go. We're going to also add some batteries to the front. Um, I think we want these smaller ones. And we're going to turn on angle snapping and symmetry. And again, we're just going to put one in the middle like so. And uh, we can also add some to the back and make sure you flip it around and yeah, place the middle one with symmetry off and that should do it for electric. So um, we're going to also add a scanning arm and it's important not to, you know, put it on that middle attachment node there because what we're putting there is a decoupler. So um, grab a decoupler and make sure you flip it so that the arrow is pointing downwards like that and that way it's not going to stay attached to our rover when we decouple it. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is to grab our scanning arm. I'm going to use the small one because it fits a lot more nicely onto this rover. So um, I'm going to place it with symmetry off and I'm going to place it in the corner like this. And uh, you want to make sure it's not going to be in the way of, of the decoupler. So I'm just going to use the offset tool and move it to the side a little bit. And there we go, that looks pretty good. And then the last thing I'm going to add is a antenna, uh, just so that we have some communication. So I'm just going to add it to the side like that. And again, make sure it's not in the way of the decoupler. And as you can see, it extends and it looks pretty nice on the side like that. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset the decoupler and I'm going to move it up with just a little bit. Because if you don't do that, then it might get caught on some of the other parts when you try to detach the sky crane. And that can cause all sorts of problems. So just um, make sure that there's nothing in the way. If there is, for example, that scanning arm, just use the offset tool to move it to the side. And that looks like it's going to come clean off. So yeah. The next thing we're going to build is the sky crane itself. So I'm going to go to robotics. So this is for those of you that do have the breaking ground DLC. If you don't, then just put some sort of structural part here. Um, I would recommend using... Where is it? Use uh, this... Actually, don't use that. Um, you actually might just be able to use one of these garter segments. Not the big one. But yeah, use one of these garter segments, I think. And then um, build the rest from that. But I'm going to go to robotics. And I'm going to grab this telescoping hydraulic cylinder. And... I'm going to extend it all the way. This is because the real Sky Crane kind of has a rope that drops the rover down. Of course, there's no ropes in KSP, so we're going to have to use these pistons instead. It doesn't really matter which way around you attach this as long, you know, as long as it's pointing upwards, I suppose. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend it all the way up for now. And yeah, let's go ahead and build the Sky Crane. So I'm going to go into structural and I'm going to get an octagonal strut like so. That's going to be the centerpiece of our sky crane. And then the next thing we need is these dumpling external tanks. I'm going to put on angle snapping and then place this in four way radial symmetry. And then the next thing we want to do is add some control to this sky crane. So I'm going to add 
an inline reaction wheel. And uh, you could put a probe core if you want, but I'm going to save a bit of weight and not do that. Although it's important that you right click on the rover and then where it says control point forward, just click that um, until you get control point up like so. All right. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to structural and I'm going to grab these pocket edition beam kind of things. And I'm going to put it on these unoccupied edges of the octagonal strut. And then we're going to go ahead to our engines and then grab this spider engine. I like having it without the, sh the shroud sort of thing. But um, so what we're going to do is we're going to place one on this edge and then one on the other edge. So we should have eight in total. There we go. And what you'll notice is that if you look at my Kerbal Engineer Redux readouts here, then it doesn't show any Delta V. And that's because these engines can't actually drain fuel from these tanks. So what we're going to need to do is go to fuel tanks and grab these external fuel ducts. So I'm going to attach one here and um, make sure you start from the tank and go to the engine. But yeah, just make sure you attach it to the engine like so. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. But there we go. As you can see, uh, we now have actual Delta V in this thing. And we have a TWR of about 0 0.64, which is about twice Duna's gravity, um, which should be good. And I also haven't mentioned that, yes, I'm also going to show how to land this thing on Duna. Um, so the next thing we want to do is I'm going to just retract this piston real quick. And um, you're going to need to make sure that these beams aren't too big. So you can just use the offset tool. Make sure you put it on local. And then you can just offset the beam until it fits quite nicely. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the other editor. So we should be in the VAB now. You just have to press that switch editor button right there. And what I'm going to do is add a decoupler to the top here. Make sure you use the smallest one. And also make sure you flip it around so that the arrow is pointing downwards. And then we're going to... Um, we're going to put a decoupler on the bottom as well with the arrow pointing upwards. And um, you're going to need something to fill this space between the rover and the bottom here. So I'm just going to put some reaction wheels. Uh, in fact, I'll put three. And then we're going to grab a fairing base. Make sure you use the 3.75 meter ones. Although I do think that the um, two meter ones actually fit. Yeah, they do. But I I'm just going to use the 3.75 meter ones for now. So uh, as you can see, we can just... Uh, I'm actually, I'm not going to build that one just yet. I'm going to grab this one on the top. And then make sure you press C to, to, to um, toggle angle snapping. And then just bring it all the way down to the bottom and close the fairing. And I'm going to change the texture to silver just because in my opinion it looks a lot better. But there we go. Um, we're also going to add some parachutes make sure you grab these drogue shoots and just attach four of them and then i'm also going to attach some separatrons to the lower fairing um so make sure you grab those put them in four-way symmetry flip them around so they point upwards and um what i'm going to do is just so that they don't fire directly into this upper part of the shell i'm going to um firstly offset them upwards a little bit and then also use the rotate tool and just kind of point them away a little bit and then that way uh, they won't be firing back into my craft. So there we go. Now uh, we're also going to need some heat shields so this thing can actually survive re-entry. Um, it probably could without these, but you know, it just makes it a little bit more realistic. And I'm going to drain the ablator, except for just 180 units. Because you really don't need a full heat shield. And for the top one, I'm going to drain it all the way. Uh, just to save on weight. So there we go. Um, what you can do is just offset these if you want. Like, if you want to use up this whole space of the fairing. Uh, in fact, that's a... Does that fit? No, not quite. So there we go. That fits quite nicely inside the fairing. Um, Okay, so what we need to do now is set up some action groups. And also make sure our staging is correct. So the flight plan for this is to um, fire up these parachutes, detach this bottom stage. And then once these parachutes are fully deployed, we can drop our rover down from our parachute module we're gonna fire up all eight engines and then once we're at a nice low speed we can shut off four of them to put it into a like a more suitable twr for hovering so on my first action group i'm just gonna click one of these groups and if i can actually click the engine that would be pretty good 
All right, so I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna hit shut down engine, and so when we hit one on our keyboard, that should shut down four out of eight of our engines. All right, so let's just make sure our staging is correct. So remember, the first thing we want to happen is for our parachutes to deploy, and we also want to separate that bottom part there. So I'm gonna drag these separatrons onto that parachute stage, and also drag this decoupler, uh, not that one, uh, this one onto that same stage. That should be our bottom stage there. The next thing we want to happen is for that top sort of half to deploy. So um, I'm just going to remove this from the staging list just because it's kind of getting in the way. So just click fairing staged and uh, that should you know only do that for the bottom one. But um, we're going to have decouple and fairing deployment on the same stage. Just because when you deploy the fairing, it makes it less likely for your sky crane to actually collide into it. And then, yep, this is all good. We can fire up those engines. And the last one is to decouple our sky crane. So there we go. That is our re-entry module. And um, I'm just going to quickly show you how to build the launch vehicle for this. So I'm going to grab a 37 or TD-37 decoupler. Um, I'm going to turn off the shroud for this heat shield um, because I think it's a little unnecessary. And we're going to get a fairing, like so. Just expand it out a little bit. And um, press C to toggle angle snapping. And you should just be able to build it up like that. And it's going to let me... Okay, so I think I need to expand this a little more. There you go. As you can see, that works quite well. Just try and find a shape that works well. And I think I'll go with that. So that's our um, bearing done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this adapter tank. And this is going to be our upper stage. Just make sure it's rotated the right way. And I'm going to use the poodle engine. It's tempting to use the rhino engine. But I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I didn't even know it had a single bell variant. I kind of do like that. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use that. As you can see, the thrust to weight ratio is actually below 1 when you initially fire it up, but that's actually fine. Uh, you don't need a thrust rate ratio of above one for your upper stage. You can normally get away with anything above 0 0.8. Hello there, quick little side note. I forgot to mention that you should probably add some solar panels to your upper stage, just because there is no electricity generation when your rover is inside the fairing. So yeah, just thought I'd mention that. So. Yeah, I'm going to grab this decoupler here. I'm going to disable the shroud on my Poodle engine. Um, and then I'm going to grab a 3.75 meter fairing. And I'm just going to build, I'm just going to make an interstage fairing uh, like so. There we go. And then I'm going to grab this kind of medium 3 meter tank. And I'm going to also grab the adapter tank. And then I'm going to use the mainsail engine because that's all you really need uh, for this. And there you go. That should be plenty of Delta V to get you to Juno. And now this thing does fly just fine without uh, fins, but you do need to be a bit careful. So, you know, if you're not too confident of a pilot, you could um, put some sort of fins here. But maybe I would go uh, with these tail fins. And if we check our center of lift, there we go. It's well below our center of mass. So that should do just fine. I'm also just going to put some launch clamps on this. And uh, yeah, you should be able to launch this and uh, get it to Duna. I'm not going to show how to actually get it to Duna um, because hopefully you know how to do that. There are plenty of tutorials out there. But um, just get this thing onto a intersection of Duna and then I'll see you when we're there. Alright, so I've gone ahead and put this thing on a trajectory that encounters Duna. And um, yeah, just stop at the edge of Duna's severe of influence like I've done here and just adjust your periapsis. I've gone for about 12 kilometers. Anything between 15 and about 5 kilometers should work just fine. But what I'm going to do is click, you know, somewhere near your periapsis and just click warp here. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and enter Duna's atmosphere. So um, what, what I'm going to do is just hit space to separate the stages. And uh, you should just be able to go ahead and point this thing retrograde like so and then you can just time warp to when you enter the atmosphere and uh you know with a periapsis like this you're going to be going straight in for a landing instead of you know error breaking into orbit so 
a lot of things are going to happen pretty fast here, so just make sure you're ready. Um, but once we uh, get below, I think, 7 kilometers, we're going to hit space for the first time, and then that should open up our parachutes. And uh, from there, things should be going a little bit slower. So at this point, I'd recommend making a quick save uh, just in case you, you know, mess something up. But as you can see here, we are now well into Juno's atmosphere and we should start hopefully slowing down a considerable amount. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my altitude onto terrain rather than sea level. And then just keep an eye on this. Once we get uh, down below seven kilometers, we can you know, hit space to stage. And in fact, I'm just going to time warp um, until we get a little bit lower. Okay, so yeah, at this point, you're going to want to stage. And as you can see, our parachutes have opened up. All right, so in just a moment, we should see our parachutes fully opened. And at that point, uh, we can wait till we get below about 50 meters per second, and then we will um, deploy our rover. So just keep an eye on your velocity here. I'm going to throttle up my engines in advance. And any moment now, we should be able to deploy this thing safely. And in fact, you can actually wait till you're about one kilometer above the surface before you deploy it. Um, you can actually go as low as about 600, but just to be safe, I'm going to deploy it now. And immediately you want to pitch to the side and fire your engines. The reason we're pitching to the side is so that we can avoid our re-entry module, but now we're going to go ahead and point retrograde on the nav ball like so. Make sure you turn on your brakes, then right click your piston and put the target extension all the way up. That should give your engines a bit of clearance from the ground. And once our velocity is low enough, we can hit action group one to shut off four of those engines. And now we're coming in at a nice low speed. We should slow down even more before we touch the ground, but um, Make sure you're ready to hit space as soon as you touch the ground. Just And then, then your sky crane will just kind of fly away. And uh, you will be free to drive your robot around. Now I'm going to throttle down my engines just a little bit because I'm slowing down very fast. So just keep an eye on your velocity here. Try to keep it around 5 meters per second at this point. And uh, now that we're below 50 meters, you can throttle it all the way up again. And just try and get your velocity down as much as possible. And any moment now, we should touch down. Make sure you're pointed straight up, pretty much. Try not to go back up, because that isn't ideal. Right, yeah, I need to throttle down more. And hit space to deploy your sky crane, and there it goes. So now you have landed your rover on the surface of Juno. You can go extend that antenna and you are now free to drive it around wherever you want once all of those explosions are finished. But are there, as you can see, that's a very successful touchdown of our rover on the surface of Duna. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, Leave a comment and all of that good generic YouTube stuff. If you want a link to my Discord, there is going to be one in the description of this video. You can join that if you want. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. Again, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.